Welcome to the Patricia Joe Grover Show, where we turn believers into achievers. And today, my guest is Mike Brennan. And Mike is a creator and communicator, telling stories on pages and stages. His childhood dream was to be to be a cartoon. <laughs> Zoinks! Uh, when he realized that that wasn't possible, he became the next best thing, an artist. He loves sharing experiences and making connections through art and helping fellow frustrated artists and creatives establish a daily creative habit of their very own. Take your creativity to a new level through the help of his course. And this, and I'll share this actually here. It's www.yourartistjourney.com and check out the creative chats podcast and this, the website for that is www.creativechats.me. And experience Mike's art at www.mikebrennan.me. Well, welcome to the show, Mike. And, and this, you know, I truly believe that art is a, a way that creative, you know, juices that re- really help people to be able to grow, to absorb other other things in the world it because it it has your your mind and your heart open and and i believe having Mm. having that open heart is the way to make a difference in in everything that we are even that we're trying to do absolutely and thank you for having me today it's a pleasure to be here Uh, and i completely agree i think you know art and and creativity open up things within ourselves that help us as people, not just in what it is that we're creating, but then also in our relationships and in bringing our perspective and the way that we see the world to other people and helping them. Because I think that's a huge part of our journeys is realizing that what we do isn't just for ourselves, it's for other people. So, so, so true. And, and with me, what I do with working with people, I help people find their purpose and their why, and I connect, and I and I say I I teach sensory vision, and we and everybody's kind of familiar with the vision boards that we we're doing, especially this time of year. But I make that five D, and and you know adding what does the what does it feel like, not just physically but emotionally. What mm-hmm. what does what do, what does when you achieve when you've achieved your dream and goal? What is it going to smell like? What is it going to sound like? You know the where where you are. You know so taking the making it 5d and that's where art comes to play you have to have that creative vision and and be able to to allow yourself to see in multicolors and yes. and all that and just the connection to that is fantastic so awesome and i see you have uh, all your works is that the, are all these your works of art behind yeah. you yeah Fan- that's all that's oh, all my work yeah. wow that is great yeah so Thank everybody you. check out check out his stuff um, so let me ask, how does someone advance their creative process when they're facing a lack of inspiration? Yeah, so, you know, it's really interesting because I think we can find ourselves in different seasons in life, right? And for me, a lot of this stuff I've had to learn um, just by trial and error and through, you know, many times, like most of us, you know, when you're faced with issues, when you're faced with these things yourself, going, okay, how am I going to push through? How am I going to break through this stuff? So, you know, when you're facing a lack of inspiration, a lot of times it's because sometimes you you let things get too routine, right? And you're looking for um, the muse. You're looking for that special moment where you're struck, you know, with an idea, with something that you want to create. And then you think, well, when that happens, when the, the muse comes to visit, then it'll be great. Then I can set and, and do the work that I need to do. Right. Um, but what happens is when we don't have those experiences, when we don't have those moments when we're like, you know, the muse is visiting us at, you know, Friday at three o'clock, you know, <laughs> um, it doesn't work that way. Right. right. Uh, and then we get frustrated and then we find ourselves in a place where we're, we're not able to create because we're in frustration. We're stuck there. So um, I think, you know, finding, um, finding inspiration is, is something that we have to be really creative about as well. Um, it's, it's setting up um, a new system of capturing when we don't need things so that when we do need things, we have something to draw from. 
and, and the way I like to say it is that, you know, we're not trying to draw from an empty well, uh, because many times I think that's when we faced with like the, the flashing cursor, you know, the blank canvas, uh, blank document kind of thing. And we get paralyzed and we're like, I don't know what to do. I'm supposed to draw on that ability to create something right now, but I'm starting to feel paralyzed and I don't know what to do about that. So, you know, to, to kind of combat that, if we start collecting things when we don't need them, then we have something to draw from when we do need them. Exactly. And so I learned this trick back in my advertising days. Uh, I was at a large advertising agency and they introduced me to this idea of what was called a swipe file. And I kind of thought it was a, a funny term for it, but really what it meant was they were swiping things from other places and sticking them in this file and it was inspiration. So it might be, you know, certain typefaces or fonts that they liked. It may be certain visuals. It may be certain concepts, whatever it was that they liked that they came across, they would tear that out, organize it and put it in this file for future reference right. because they knew at some point they were going to have a project that they would need to look at who are the people who went before me? What are the ideas that are currently out there? what's happening that's outside of my brain and my experiences that I need to have to let influence me. Right. And so it's not a copying or a, um, you know, mimicking by any means, but rather it's, it's allowing influence and um, setting yourself up for success in those moments so that you have something to draw from when you need to create, you know? Exactly. And, and I would say, being an author myself and um you know and, and again that's that same thing sometimes you just you're, you're sitting in front of that typewriter the keyboard whatever and the words just aren't flowing and you need those things to, to help prompt and um what i what i had done at one time is actually i started saving the little pieces of paper from the fortune cookies and mm. ones that had something that clicked with me I saved them. So if I just need to pull something out and that might just spur that word, that might yeah. just be just one of the words on that little piece of paper might yeah. be just what I needed to have for that. Um, so I, I totally get it. And I can understand for an artist who is with uh, in front of a, a blank canvas, you know, what that stroke, what's that first stroke going to be? Yeah. Yeah. So fantastic. That's that is great. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So what are some common struggles that, that artists do deal with besides, besides that inspiration piece? Yeah. Besides the inspiration piece, I think a lot of artists um, have issues where maybe they have the other issue, right? Where they're so inundated with ideas and so overwhelmed by what they want to do that they don't know how to prioritize it. Like it's, it's, paralyzing because they think i i don't know which idea to execute first i don't know how to prioritize and make which ones are more important than the others i know there's a lot of things i want to do but i don't know what ones should take precedence here and so that very fact of being so overwhelmed then leads to sometimes just doing nothing and not executing on any ideas not starting um and so trying to figure out the way of, okay, how can we start to capture those things so that we don't lose those ideas and then start to prioritize and say, you know, what are the things that are important to me? And maybe what are the things that, that can serve other people around me right now? You know, where are the needs of other people? Where is there some alignment that may happen where you get, you know, the, uh, the things that you're interested in and the needs of the other people where that overlaps, that's a sweet spot because that's going to be more of the things that you want to do that doesn't feel like work necessarily, right? Um, because it, it's part of your passion, it's part of your drive, right. but then it's also serving a very practical and a very um, important need in somebody else that's fulfilling that need. Uh, and sometimes, you know, when we talk about art and needs and problem solving and things, it, it gets a little bit hard for some artists, especially to wrap their heads around some creative people, because they think, well, it's art. Like, how am I problem solving, right? But I say, if if somebody needs more joy in their life, right? Like this year has been a very right. difficult year. I don't think anyone would be like, no, I'm good on joy. I'm, I'm good, you know, <laughs> right? Right, right? So I think if we start to understand that sometimes the things that we create, it's not necessarily about the physical thing that you're actually looking at, but rather it's a representation or it brings a feeling or it brings um, maybe a thought or a memory for somebody. 
uh, a connection point. And so if that connection point is over joy and that person who is receiving that art needs more joy in their life, then you are solving a problem. You're filling a need. Right. Um, and so sometimes we need to, to reframe conversations in our heads um, and get past some of those problem areas. So, you know, if it's, if it's too many problems, figuring out, you know, too many, um, I, I should say too many interests and, and ideas that we have as, as creative people, it's figuring out where can I just start, pick one thing and serve somebody with that. And maybe pick something that is um, a little easier to check off the list so that you get some momentum going in actually uh, creating your, your, you know, your action points there, right? Because when you topple over the first one that's easier, it's a lot easier to then move on to the next thing as opposed to setting yourself up with the most difficult first off and then struggling and struggling and struggling and then maybe even wanting to give up when you're halfway through and then some creative people have the problem of finishing, right. right? They start a lot of things, but they don't finish. So I think, you know, some of it is, is, is employing systems. Uh, and, and a lot of it also is stopping and being able to ask yourself questions so that you become a little self-aware of what exactly is the thing that I'm facing right now that's blocking me from moving forward. Uh, and creating the work that I need to do and that others need. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we start to identify what those areas are, then go, okay, what are the systems that I can put into place or figure out that enable me to start taking action? Um, because it's not until we get to that point that we're actually going to start creating if anything and then getting it out to the people who need it. You know? Right, right. You know, um, I really, you know, Mike, I really think of art and, and, and on, on canvas, on paper or whatever, almost like a song, a whole song right there in front of me, you know, and, and with, with all that, you can, you can get so much joy, pleasure, um, sorrow from just one painting, one piece of yes. art, you know, and I see it as that way. And I can see how um, someone who is more talented in, in certain, you know, I, what we say because there are so many different forms of artwork mm -hmm. yeah that that it could be difficult to um say how am i going to represent this and get it into this and and have it touch people's hearts and souls so so i can i can see that that can be um you know a, immense pressure you know yeah. if somebody's trying to do that especially if they're getting paid to do a piece of work exactly you know i can there's more pressure right Right. So I, so I can see that, but that, again, that's, that's how I represent and I, how I think of art, whether it be again, music or, or what you do. So, um, and I, so I can understand that. The other thing too, I want to throw in there real quick is a lot of times people think creativity in terms of the obvious arts, meaning visual art, like the stuff that I do and I have behind me or maybe, you know, theater or, you know, music, those kind of things where they say, well, I'm not really creative because I don't do those expressions. Um, but I believe that we're all creative in some capacity and that creativity may take a different form. It may be that somebody's creative when it comes to systems and organizing. Mm -hmm. um, like God knows that I need that in my life, right? I need those people yeah. to help me be more organized. I exactly. need help. I need help with systems of things so that when I create so much work that I know where it is, or I know how to access certain things. Um, and so some people, they, they shy away from thinking of themselves as creative just because it's not, again, some kind of obvious form. But I think all these things that we're talking about can really be applied no matter what it is that somebody's creating. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And thank God. Thank God we yes. are all different because life would be so boring if we were all the same. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. Um, so why does it break your heart when you see artists stop pursuing and, and get stuck in their art? I think too many times the artist road is so difficult. And from early on, it's been my experience talking to fellow creative people that, you know, I had this conversation when I was younger, right? I was so into art when I was, when I was a kid, it was cartoons, like we mentioned, right? Yeah. In my bio, right? Uh, cartoons, more, more my world, comic books, all those kind of things. 
And when I realized that this is something that I love and I want to do more of, I made that decision of like, hey, I want to go to art school. And I remember having that conversation with my parents. And of course, there's kind of that sigh, like, ooh. <laughs> and the thought of the, quote, starving artist right. is always part of the conversation. Right. And so, you know, as a matter of fact, that was something that even ended up steering me in art school when my parents realized that I was going to be stubborn enough to be like, I'm going to art school or I'm not going to school, right? Yeah. I don't know who I thought I was fooling with that, but you know, they said, okay, well, if that's the course that you're going to take, then at least do something that is a little bit more financially stable. Um, and so in the arts and in visual arts, what is something that you can do that, that may at least give you a better livelihood? And so graphic design was something that was also of interest. And that's what I ended up going towards. And that's what, you know, I've been doing for years and years, but it was this point at which, um, I, I needed to to make that decision of yes, this is something I want to pursue, and um, and and then thankfully my parents did support me in that. But a lot of people don't have that support. A lot of people they come up against a lot of internal self doubt, which derails them, and then they also have the external people who are saying, "Don't be the starving artist," or "Do something more practical." Um, that's a big one too. You know, if you can, if you can just be a doctor or a oh, lawyer, yeah. that would oh. be so much better, right? <laughs> that, that's, that's a nice hobby, but, um, you know, exactly, right. exactly. But you know, at the end of the day, you have to pay the bills at the end of the day, you have to be a responsible citizen, you know? And so I think that a lot of creative people early on in their journey, even before they get started, get so discouraged and overwhelmed with all of that, that they don't even set out on the path to try they don't they say, don't they don't give it a hundred percent exactly right right exactly and so that breaks my heart because so many people have untapped passion and potential and again as we said before i think it's not just about them as a person but it's also about somebody's waiting for that thing that only they could create and if they're not out there creating if they're not following their passion and and their desire to do that then there's a void. There's, there's people are missing out and there's a lot of people missing out. And so um, when I talk with people who, who are in that place where maybe they were like, you know, when I was younger, it was so much a part of my life, but then I had to do the responsible thing or, you know, put it on a shelf or stop doing it for whatever reason. Um, and, and you can tell that there's this glimmer in their eye that they're still like, there's something there. They've quieted it so many times that it's, deep, deep down, but it's still there. It's still alive. And every once in a while, when they have conversation with somebody, they get this little pang inside where they're like almost coming alive again a little bit thinking about, man, wouldn't it be great if I could, but then they go, well, I don't know how. And, um, and that's what, you know, I love to enter into those conversations and try to help people through that process, you know? Oh, and, and that's fantastic. And yeah, I would say Anybody that's listening right now, if you have any of that passion in you to be creative, um, hey, reach out, reach out to, to Mike, you know, really, because just having that, um, the creative and, and no matter what it is, I, it doesn't, you know, you look at kids and, you know, the when they do the pictures and they're so happy and they want, hey, this is for you. And, you know, they 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 want to they're expressing themselves on Absolutely. on that on that paper and they, their love, all their heart goes out onto that, you know, and being a Grammy, every single go, everything thing goes on my refrigerator, yeah, you yeah. know. And uh, I, I have to share a story with you, Mike, when I when I was a kid, I knew. I knew, um, I knew that especially older, older women, um, would, you know, they, they loved these things and, and that was something to them. So I, as a kid, I would do pictures and I'd go around the neighborhood and selling them to my, to my neighborhood, older folks and, and it made their day and it gave me yeah. some m money to go to the, to the, at the uh, city pool and, and hang out for the day. <laughs> so, you know, um, it is things don't, you know, what, and, and kids, and it's not just kids, you know, for people to be able to express themselves in, in a way. And when they, and that is, you are putting your um, emotions, you know, into that, whether it's molding clay, yeah. 
yeah. or, or painting, you know, or, or whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's writing your book, whether it's writing your song, you know, so don't crush, don't, don't crush other people's dreams and, and, you know, just let them explore themselves and, Hey, not everybody has those hit records. Not everybody makes those million dollar sales of Picassos and, and so on and so forth. But just think if we didn't have those people, if they didn't do what they did, look at what we wouldn't have to, yeah. to be listening to music and to be going to museums to see. So it, it, it is, it's a blessing that people have these talents. So, oh, so wonderful to have you on the show, Mike. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So again, um, is it, what else would you, uh, you know, I, I know we shared the stuff in the beginning, but do you have anything that um, you'd like to offer the viewers and listeners? Yeah, well, I, I love having these conversations with fellow creative people. And again, sometimes it's all different types of creativity we're talking about. Sometimes it's creative entrepreneurs, honestly. Right. You know, it's people who are creating content um, to help and serve other people, right. you know, course creators and, and writing books and things like that that we talked about. Um, and sometimes it is visual artists and, and whatnot. And so I have these conversations even on my own podcast, you know, Creative Chats, which we mentioned before. Right. Um, and each week, being able to dive into somebody's story, unpack their journey a little bit, finding some some similarities, honestly, and some commonalities. And I think a lot of times when we have those conversations with people and we realize like, oh, you know what? I'm not alone in my experience. Exactly. I think exactly. I am. Exactly. I think I am. I feel isolated, especially today, right? Mm -hmm. In the in the you know climate that we're in right now. Um, I feel alone in what I'm experiencing, but really I'm not alone. Right. And especially as creatives and artists, we love to be, you know, uh, individuals. We love to be unique, right? And so sometimes we take that uniqueness and we wrongfully carry it over to our trials and tribulations as well. And we say, I'm unique in my trials. I'm unique in what I'm experiencing and these difficulties. And now I have nobody to relate to. I have nobody to um, commiserate with, right? Right. Um, but when we start to open up and share these stories and and listen to them, surround ourselves with them. I mean, that, that was my journey, like where I needed to hear other people's stories to be encouraged right. from my own path. I needed to know, oh, that's normal. That's okay. And this is how somebody dealt with that problem or is dealing with it currently. And it brought an affinity with that person, with their journey, and then with their work. Right. And that's what builds community. Um, and so I love having these conversations because we dive into all of that stuff. And then we dive into some of the particulars as well of whatever the person does in their creative expression. Um, and, and just really looking for those universal themes that we can apply no matter what the creative expression is, because I think we can all learn from each other. We can all learn from the experiences, from the journeys and from, you know, what it is that we're doing and realize that like, no matter where we are in our journey, whether we're just starting or where, you know, we've been in something for years and years and years, there's always something that we're trying to figure out. There's always something that uh, a problem that we need to creatively solve. Right. And so if we understand that more and more, we'll have less of this mentality of thinking like, well, I'm just down here, I'm just starting out, or I'm, I'm struggling with all these things. And yet those people are way up there and we put them on a pedestal. But no, like, let's tear that system down and then start to just circle up and have some conversations and be a little real and a little authentic. And so that's what I love to do on my podcast. And I would invite, if anybody's, if this is resonating with anybody, yeah. you know, check out some episodes um, because I think you can be greatly encouraged for your own journey. Definitely. And that's fantastic, Mike. And, and what I, what I tell people, um, because again, me helping people to understand and find out their purpose and their why, what, with what we have going on globally right now, with people, the careers that they've had for so many years, and now maybe not even that business, not still being yeah. in existence exactly. and having to, whatever they had for jobs or whatever, a lot of people are saying, what do I want to do now? What do I want to be when I grow up? You know, and they're having to go back and revisit what, what things that they had gotten joy out of and and maybe they were some something they had as a hobby or anything like that to look at making into a new business or a way to make money yeah. so i i say if you've had dreams when you were a child of something and if those revisit you there's a reason for that 
you yeah. know, and, and explore it. Explore it. Open your exactly. heart, open your mind, and explore these things. Because if it's still there, there's a reason for it. So, yeah. oh, thanks again for being with me, um, Mike. And um, I hope I hope people are getting something from this. And um, reach out to, to either Mike or I. And um, for anybody that would like to find out more about me, you can go to patriciajoegrover.com. And um, everything's there. And I have gifts for everybody that's on today, listening and viewing. If you text the word GOAL, G-O-A-L, to 866-926-4020, I have gifts there for you. It's the seven steps to goal achievement. You know, uh, just, um, you know, and right now um, my second edition of my book is coming out and I have a $5 off coupon there for you. But you don't even have to place your pre-order for the book. What I really want to do is help people. I have three assignments there. If you do those assignments and return them to me, I will help you put together your foundation for achieving your dreams and goals in 2021. So, um, and again, so thank you again for, for being with me, Mike. And until next time, everyone, have a great day.